Next question is from Rudy's One More Fitness. I'm having a son soon, and my biggest concern is when he is school-aged and needs to have a packed lunch. I really don't want him eating this garbage school food, but I feel like it's hard to meal prep for a child. What have you done or plan to do? Yeah, so this is a kind of a tough one, mm. mainly because you're not the only influence over your child, especially when they start to go to school. Mm. They will be comparing their food to other kids and what my friends are eating, and then you don't want to create a situation where, you know, like I have friends like this where their parents were so ridiculous and strict that as soon as the kids moved out of the house, they went ape shit in the opposite direction. They're all obese now. Mm -hmm. um, so. Couple things I'll say. Number one, you can. There are fun snacks and meals that your kid won't feel totally weird pulling out uh, and eating. You know, uh, jerky. So a lot of kids like that. Cheese, um, fruit, nuts. Uh, those things are all pretty good. And then here's the other part of it: children are pretty damn resilient, especially if they're active. And if they have a good breakfast and a good dinner. Sometimes it's okay that lunch is a little bit more of the fun kind of stuff that they're going to eat with their friends. Like they might have some chicken nuggets or some pizza rolls or whatever, you know, once a day or one, you know, every other day. Breakfast and lunch, if those are good. And here's in my family, the majority of our calories usually come in dinner. That's our meal together. And that's mm -hmm. the one I have the most control over. So I know if they have a little bit here, a little bit there. But then we have a good dinner. I'm feeling okay. Yeah, that, that's where we get like uh, our our peace of mind is is really the the dinner like that we all share together. We can control pretty much uh, what what what's going to you know be consumed there. Um, it to be honest, it's not that hard. I mean, if you want to prep ahead of time and you want to make sure like your kids have the certain foods, like you can pack them this. Obviously, they're gonna uh, they're gonna go to school and they'll probably get stuff from their friends or whatever. They might not eat the whole thing, but I mean that's out of your control. So you just gotta keep you know uh, basically focusing on what you can control and what you can kind of prep ahead of time and, and allow them to uh, to eat. It. I, I would worry less about like. Um, you know, basically like how, how their, their, their friends are influencing them. We had to kind of relieve that because there, there's even some negotiations that had to happen on some days where there was like a pizza, you know, day where the, they were, they got really excited for that. And so, okay, that meal is accounted for, you know, at school, they're going to eat this and we just got to deal with that. We're going to make up uh, a nice healthy meal when they get home for dinner. And, you know, and this is also going to happen at, you know, grandma and grandpa's house. Oh, Dude. And, and their friend's house and when they go to stay overnight. And so it's just, it you better prepare yourself now for the fact that you just, you can only influence based off how you eat and how you're all the normal ways that you have programmed to eat. Uh, whether or not that's going to last is, is up to the kid. I'm glad you said that just because I, uh, I really wanted to hear what you both had to say about this. Obviously I don't have a child that's in school yet, um, but I do think about this, right? Um, and I, the family, right. And that's a great example. Like, I don't think it's that much different than going over to grandma and grandpa's house or whatever, because it presents the same type of challenges, right? They're at somebody else's place where there's other food that's being eaten, everybody else. So the, the way that Katrina and I do it right now is we, when we are prepping our food, she's also prepping Max's food at the same time. So like l last night we did like a, uh, Katrina does this bison and rice dish that we really like. And the only real difference is this right now we do like seasoning and all kinds of stuff, spices and things in our dishes where he eats more bland food right now. So she'll always separate like, you know, a few ounces of the bison. And we have these little things that she, you know, Tupperwares them in and he's got his bison, his rice, and then like this smashed up avocado. And that's going to be like his meal for the next two or three days. It's in the refrigerator. And if we all take him over to his, his grandmother's house, we bring that for her. Like, here's his lunch. Here's what, here's what he's going to eat at this time. And like, and we just tell them, can I control everything that goes in his mouth? Probably not, nor am I going to, I'm not going to worry about it, but I feel like if, and then the same thing goes for when he gives out, goes out to school, like I'm not going to fight him if his friend lets him bite into his, you know, you know, what with a lunchable cracker snack, I'm not going to freak out over him. I mean, it is what it is, but I'm going to prepare the same way that I prepare right now. Like he'll go to lunch. I mean, every, as far as I know, every school has a microwave for him to reheat his, his meal. If I give him what we had last night at dinner left over, which is how I eat all the time. And he sees that I eat like that all the time. 
I don't think it'll be that weird, especially if it tastes good. Mm-hmm. If it tastes good, he likes it. He had it at dinner the night before with us, and now he's got it in a glass yeah. bowl that he can reheat the next day at school. Uh, that's how I, I plan to try and control it. And when the the days of pizza days come or a friend he wants, I don't think I'm going to be a Nazi over it. I think I'm going to allow him to do that intermittently. As long as I am feeding him as best I can at home, he's a majority that means his food is controlled by me. And then I'm going to send him to school with those same types of foods. And then when those things happen, when he eats it here and there, I don't think I'm yeah, really going to worry too much. What you don't want to do is you don't want to demonize uh, right. food because you're going to create, uh, you potentially could create this rebellious attitude around mm-hmm. food. You know, we talked earlier about you eating ice cream. Part of that you say is because when you were a kid, if the ice cream came, it was gone. Yeah. So then when you grow up, you're like, I'm eating ice cream every single night. Right. This is a pattern you could build in your kid if you make it super, too strict and you demonize foods. <clears throat> so the you know way you teach them balance is it's kind of not a big deal. And they have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, not a big deal. And when we pre- prepare meals, it's just how we prepare it. It's you, just, it's a, it's a healthy food. You're also shaping his palate right now, right? Especially so, when they're really little. Yes. Yeah. So that's the way I look that's at it. That's a crucial time. That's, so here's like, so there's, um, you know, I talk about my two friends who have kids that are a year and a year and a half ahead of us. And something that Katrina and I have been adamant about with Max is we have not introduced any sweets. No cookies, no tape. Like, and I know this is a thing for parents and grandparents. They think it's so cute and funny to let a, a, a toddler lick an ice cream cone and then look at the face afterwards. I know. Because there's not a single kid that doesn't go, oh, yeah. holy shit. Yeah. You know, like yeah. literally they're, they're, you could see they, get, they light up like a Christmas tree. And then what I see happening is I see my friends using that as reward to get their kids to do things they want them to do. Oh, mm-hmm. Say they're being fussy at night, they don't want to do this, or they don't want to put their pajamas on or what like that. If you want that cookie after dinner, then you need to do this. And they start using these pleasure foods as re- a reward system, and they start training their kid before he even knows to ask for a cookie or ice cream. And then you wonder why it's such a struggle for you when they're two, three, four, and five. Right. Where right now, like I'm, while I'm controlling everything that goes in his mouth, literally, it just that is an absolute no. Like I, I can resist the oh, I want to see what my kid looks like when he bites into a cookie. I'm not going to do that, and I'm going to wait till he can ask me, which is probably means he's going to be three or four at the bare minimum. Where and then can, it's different, and then it's different, yeah, and then you, by that time he's had three years of consistently eating these healthy foods. What will probably happen, and I've seen parents that are really good about this, is the kid thinks it's too sweet. Dude, I give he my, tries half yep, of it yep. and then he, he he puts it away. I give my kids a so soda, soda and yeah, ice cream. Yeah, I've done that. Or I'll give my kids a soda. Actually, not even a soda. One of those Izzy drinks, which is not even a soda. It's like less sugar and smaller. And I'll I'll say, yeah, you can have one. And then my daughter will bring it to me halfway. I don't want any more. Yeah. Just on her own. Right. Because we didn't give them a ton of sugar. No, it's... And you know the palate? They start to develop the palate in utero. Yes. And then uh, when the mom breastfeeds. So based this off of the This is why it's so important for women that are pregnant right now to do your best. And I know the health of the baby matters most and getting calories. And I don't want to make any moms feel guilty that have weird cravings. I get all that stuff. But I mean, the conversation that Katrina and I had during that time is, uh, I, you know, and she asked me, like, you know, how would you handle it if you were pregnant? Right. So we play that game. And I said, you know, the way I look at it is like when I was prepping for competing, like none of that was fun. Like I didn't enjoy eating these these foods all the time, but I had a goal. I had this goal that I'm going to be the best my version of myself. I, I don't think there's a time in in my life that I could think that would be more important than getting ready to set the 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 tone for my child. Like that's that supersedes any stupid trophy or saying that I yeah. work to it. So the way I would I would be competitive with myself if I if I what were to carry a baby of like. I got nine months. I'm going to discipline myself to be just like such a dude. (laughs) I know. I know. Right. And I know there's women. You don't even know. I know know there's women. Like it's so hard for a guy to have. But this is what I'm telling you is the conversation I had with Katrina. Right. She asked me like, how would you mentally prepare yourself for going in? And I said, I would look at it the same way. Only it's even more important because it's my child. It it continues. It continues with breastfeeding too. uh, I watched a documentary on it and they said that they start to develop their palate a lot. Through the through breast milk, through what the mom you know will eat. Now Jessica has been pretty good about this. She'll eat like a spoonful of fish eggs sometimes in the morning for the omega. I mean, it's fish eggs, you know. Yeah. But you know, hopefully my kid is born and eventually yeah. will like to eat fish. I know I hated it when I was a well, kid. Well, what I can yeah, tell you, sacrifice. Right, what I can yeah. tell you right now, and maybe I'm an anomaly or whatever. Max eats everything. Every single thing we put in front of him, he eats, mm. and he loves vegetables and he eats all the meats like. 
He eats everything that we give him, and he's not been introduced to any any sugar except for what comes from fruit. Mm -hmm. Like the, his his diet has been that way, and it hasn't been a fight or a struggle with us at all. And I think a lot of that has to do with Katrina was dialed all the way through pregnancy, all the way through breastfeeding, and then when we introduced foods, we introduced all these whole foods to him, and that's how it's been since day one. Have you had him try a lemon yet? I don't think she's <laughs> done a lemon. That's fun. If you want to see a reaction, yeah, I don't think she's done a. Give lemon. a little kid a lemon slice and just watch their faces. Yeah, I was, I was, I, I was actually eating. Uh, I gave him his first like dab of like salsa, right? And you saw his face get like that, right? Where he was like, "Whoa, that was way <laughs> too spicy." I, he was sitting in my lap, and I was Katrina made me a quesadilla, and I was dipping it in salsa, and he, he you could tell he really wanted it. I'm like, like and she was like, "Don't let him have that," and I'm like, oh, "I just want to see his face. When he <laughs> yeah, takes yeah. a little bit of salsa, right?" <laughs> that's and, a Whoa. that's a good time. There's yeah. this video on YouTube of this little kid who he gets an onion because he thinks it's an apple. Oh, no. Did you see this video? Uh, and he bites into it and he's like, and his eyes are like, ah, but he keeps eating it. He keeps eating the <laughs> he's, trying, he's like, it's different, but ah, it's a great maybe video. it'll get better.